Hi everybody, Mrs. Horn here. Today we get to start a new unit. This is our next unit in our notebook. And uh, it's one of my favorites because you can look around outside, even out on the road in front of your house and you can see evidence of what we're gonna study about. We're gonna talk about weathering and erosion. Today, we're just talking about weathering and what can cause something like this on the road. Now, this is a picture of a road near me, and this is what it's looking like at this time of the year. Lots of potholes, lots of uh, <clears throat> little puddles in there, and what we're going to talk today about what caused that. Um, I'm going to need you to get your notebooks out. I don't know what page it's on. So you're going to have to look to find where weathering and erosion starts. I think it's at the beginning of this new notebook. So I think it's actually before geologic history. So, so check at the beginning and make sure you're in the right spot. So this picture is something that you might recognize might be familiar to you because you've either driven on a road that looks like this maybe your driveway looks like this um, something else that maybe you haven't seen this something with this background all these icebergs and glaciers in there but maybe you've seen a rock like this that appears as though it's been cracked right through i'm going to explain why that happens too let's get to our notes if you have some colored pens, now would be a great time to use them. If I get going too fast, don't feel don't don't be afraid to pause the video so that you can catch up. Okay, so let's talk about weathering. Weathering is any kind of physical or chemical breakdown of a rock into smaller pieces. It's usually caused by something in the air and or water. So weathering is some kind of a breakdown of a large rock into small pieces. And you know those pieces are called sediments. There are two different types of weathering. We're gonna start talking about physical weathering. To physically weather something, is to actually take a rock and crack it or break it into pieces without changing it into a different rock. So the picture of the road that I showed you, that's an example of physical weathering because it was broken into smaller pieces. It's still pavement, it's still the same material, but it's just in smaller pieces. That big rock that I just showed you, let me scoot back up to that. This, this large rock, it is all the same type of rock. It's just split into two halves. So it's still the same rock though. So physical weathering simply breaks it into smaller pieces, doesn't change the rock. Physical weathering can happen a couple different ways. The first thing that could happen is temperature, and that's what happened in that rock I just showed you. Temperature is one way that rocks can be physically weathered. When a rock's outside and it's heated up by the sun, little particles inside that rock start to um, expand and spread out. Well, when that same rock is now outside and maybe at night it gets cool, or maybe in the winter it gets freezing, and those molecules and, and sediments inside the rock, they start to contract because they get really, really cold. Over time, what would happen is that it would crack or pieces are going to break off into layers or chunks. That's called exfoliation. That is what ha is happening to that picture of the road that I showed you when our roads go through the freezing temperatures and the warming temperatures and then the freezing temperatures again, those molecules are expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting and it does that so much that they start to break apart. So that is physical weathering. Another example 
of something that can cause physical weathering is called frost action. Its other nickname is frost wedging. And this would happen when it still has something to do with temperature, um, but when water gets in between um, little cracks in the road or little cracks in a rock, and then when that water freezes and it expands, it will crack the rock even more or it will make the pothole even bigger. So when we have little tiny holes in our road in the fall, that same little tiny hole is probably huge by the time spring comes because of all the time that water got in it and then it froze and expanded and made the hole much bigger. That is called frost action. Okay, and these are still physical weathering. Oh, this is, this is a fun one. Um, have you ever seen a tree grow out of a rock? Maybe if you've gone hiking, uh, I've seen this, I've seen evidence of this in the Adirondacks when we've been on trails, but this is called organic activity. Organic because it's referring to trees or shrubs and it would happen when a little tiny seed gets wedged into a little crack of a rock and if the conditions are just right, it will start to grow and it will start to spread its roots on or maybe even into the crack in the rock and over some time it might make the rock um, make the cracks in the rock even bigger let me show you a real picture of that I'm, I'm going to come back to that so please don't worry but this is a picture of something that i found in the adirondacks and this is an example of organic activity so this is this tree physically separated this rock because it started to grow in a little tiny crack and then as it got bigger and bigger and bigger it moved the rock farther apart all right i'm going to go back up to here um and a fourth thing that would cause physical weathering of rocks would be something called abrasion now the best thing i can think of to relate it to is sandpaper you probably have sandpaper around your house. You may have used it. You may have seen mom or dad or a sibling use it before on a project, probably with wood. But sandpaper feels very gritty and pretty much like sand. And when you rub it against something, it wears those little particles off of it and it makes the surface a little smoother. Um, well, when, when objects are rubbed together out in nature, the same thing can happen. So I don't really mean sandpaper, but if you look at this picture here of this rock, and it looks like these things are flying at it. But let's just imagine that those are little sediments that are being blown in the wind. And as those sediments hit that rock day after day after day after day after day after a thousand years, that rock might start to... Um, weather away a little bit and it might eventually become very flat because those particles are hitting it every single day lots of them um, and it might wear it away so that is another example of physical weathering it's called abrasion think of sandpaper think of using sandpaper on something in it and it smooths it out just like this rock is being done Okay, here's my picture of organic activity. And I'm going to move into the other kind of weathering. And this one is called chemical weathering. So the difference here is that now chemical weathering is still breaking down rocks, but it's changing it into something different. So it's no longer the same rock at the end of this. It, it chemically changes the minerals or the chemical composition of the rock. Okay, so a couple, a couple ways that that can happen. The first one is called carbonation. This happens when carbon dioxide that's in our air gets mixed in with water 
and becomes something called carbonic acid. Now, it's not a very strong acid. It would not hurt you, but it can, over time, um, wear away certain rocks like, um, well, calcite is a mineral, but limestone is a rock. Marble is a rock. It's a metamorphic rock. And those two rocks are made up of calcite. Now, when you add carbon dioxide to um, some other kind of a material like water, um, it's called carbonation. So what's happening in these pictures here is that this, all this brick material, this is limestone, which is a sedimentary rock, and it looks like there are some little cracks in the limestone. As it rains, okay, the water that's falling has mixed with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And when it falls on this limestone, because limestone has calcite in it, that very weak carbonic acid is going to start to eat away at the limestone. So this doesn't look so bad. This does not look very serious. But if that were to go on for 10,000 years, it could result in something that looks like this. And it could start to make those holes even bigger and eventually turn into caves or a cavern. Other things that it might form inside the cavern might be, and here, and this is number one here, this is called a sink hole, which would be a, just a big dip in the surface. Sometimes sinks, sinkholes are covered up by tall grass and you might not even be able, you don't, you don't even know it's there until you actually fall into it. Um, the second structure here is called a column, and that forms when um, water drips from the top of the ceiling of the cavern and it drips down to the bottom and it starts to form a pile of um, solidified material. And it actually um, happens over a long period of time and, and then they eventually connect. Um, number three is called a stalactite. Uh, we can remember that because it holds tight to the ceiling. We, we call number four a stalagmite. It's on the ground because you might trip over it, so it's a stalagmite. Numbers three and four here, the stalactite and the stalagmite, eventually over time will become a column, just like number two. If you've ever been to a place called Howe Caverns, it is actually a wonderful place to go see carbonation in action. And I just want to give you a little clip of it to show you there is some place right in New York State that you could go to see this. 